Hello, this is David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper, and to watch over 600 videos on life-saving preparedness, go to ldsprepper.com. Today, we're talking about harvesting your produce at peak maturity. Today is June 1st, and I'm in Zone 5A for growing, and I'm in my ge geothermal greenhouse. These plants have been planted 56 days ago. Now, I'm in my greenhouse because I need to do some harvesting, I'm over here at the cabbage and I'm looking at the cabbage even though we have these monster cabbage leaves here just absolutely gigantic this is probably at least two feet from the tip to just to here over three feet long this cabbage is not ready to harvest so that's got a few more days to harvest how I laid out this box is that according to the general harvesting dates my cauliflower would be harvested before my broccoli before my cabbage before the watermelon before the cantaloupe before the cucumbers before the tomatoes and this is the east side of the garden and down on this end where i have the cabbage and the cauliflower as directed by the midland gardening course book i've got two rows i've got my taller plants here to the north of the greenhouse so they're not shading these shorter plants but it's interesting for me to notice that even though this broccoli is absolutely huge and gorgeous, and so is this one, this cauliflower, uh, I mean, if you found this in the grocery store, you'd, you'd think you'd, you hit the mother load. It, it looks great. Uh, this cauliflower is also amazing. But when I get over to where the plants in the same box have had this, had had more direct sunlight because they're on the south side they are even larger uh, just take a look at this plant here you can see my hand here in the photo uh, just uh, amazing how much direct sun makes a difference so i will be harvesting this broccoli t today and how do i know when to harvest broccoli well you can see i've got all the green florets here and then I've got some yellow ones coming up and when those open up uh, I've I've waited too long so looks like these are about getting ready to open up so I'm going to be harvesting that today uh, here's another smaller uh, cauliflower and you can see the amount of uh, shadow that it has there so it hasn't grown as well as the one here that has less shadows from the leaves but uh, you can see this broccoli, uh, this cauliflower here is still nice and tight, has a good head on it. So when these start separating, these florets start separating, then you've waited a little too long. So this one here is ready to harvest too. I have a couple of beautiful, beautiful strawberries here, and these are ready to harvest. They're a very deep red, and so it's ready for them to come off the vine. How I like to do is I like to just kind of pull on this strawberry here and it just came just right off with hardly any pressure at all. And this one over here should come off just as easy. It's a little bit of tug. And sometimes I can actually leave the, the, the uh, green part on the plant. But those, you can see I've got juice on my hands. These are perfect. You'll never get these in the grocery store because they have to pick them weeks before they're actually fully developed and so because they generally just use nitrogen phosphorus potassium and they don't use the micronutrients uh, they're basically flavorless they look good and, they, and, the, and they're red but they have no flavor these are just so so sweet and sugar is a compound and the plant makes sugar how, how do how is there sugar in a strawberry you don't add sugar to the soil but when you add the right nutrients, the right elements, the right minerals from the LDS Prepper Premium Micronutrient Mix to, uh, to the soil so the plants can absorb that, they can take all those building blocks and build sugar. And that's why these are so sweet, amazing. My wife uh, wanted pancakes with strawberries and maple syrup in bed for Mother's Day, so we didn't have these ready yet. I went to... Uh, Costco and bought those big red strawberries and they were absolutely flavorless. It was really a letdown. You cannot buy these strawberries in the store at any price. 
Now here's another strawberry, and this looks great, but it's not as deep red as the others that I just ate. So this is going to take another day or two before we harvest this. Then it will be at, at its peak maturity, which will give us peak nutrition and most amount of sugars. And this is exactly what we're looking for in our vegetables. Peak performance, peak nutrition. Even though these tomato plants are thick and unbelievably healthy, well, it's believable if you use the right, uh, if you follow the laws of plant growth, but just look how beautiful these plants are. Um, and we do have tomatoes on here. We have fruit set, but they're obviously not ready to eat yet. So uh, it does take time. These were planted, again, 55 days ago, and uh, they are doing very, very well. We have found that when we plant using the mint lighter method and the we weekly feed and the pre-plant, that we're harvesting 84-day corn in 62 days. The reason is the plant has all the nutrients and water available to it all the time, so it doesn't need an extra month or longer to grow to reach maturity. Now, as you can see from these onions, I've topped them twice. I'll need to be topping them again, and that helps put all the energy down into the stalks. And you can see that these are really growing very, very well. In about another month or so, we'll have the bulbs above ground. Now, I planted these much closer than I typically do. I usually plant two rows instead of four. I got two rows on this side and then two rows on the other. And these are planted four inches apart, and I usually plant them six inches apart. So typically, it's one row on each side of the watering pipe, six inches apart. But I, my wife had her herbs here in the garden, and so I didn't have the whole length of the bed, so I just kind of squished them together because I didn't want to throw onion bulbs away. But we have been eating these. Uh, I've probably been eating these greens here on my uh, mashed potatoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for uh, uh, probably close to three or four weeks now. So don't throw away this part of the plant because there's actually probably more food in the greens than there is actually in the bulb. The same thing goes for your cabbage plants, basically your, your brachias, your cauliflower, and your broccolis. There is more food in the leaves than there is in the actual flower or florets. So don't be wasting that food. Make sure that you're making smoothies or giving it to your livestock so they can enjoy all the nutrients that you put into the soil for the plants. These Yukon Gold potatoes that I've been fertilizing religiously every week with the high-end organic fertilizer are obviously in no condition to be harvested yet. These potatoes here uh, also are not ready to be harvested and I haven't fed them at all. It's interesting that the ones that are not getting any fertilizer from the organic fertilizer are doing better. Uh, there must be something in that organic fertilizer that's causing a problem in the garden. So I'm only using it there on the test potatoes because I don't want to damage my produce and the rest of the garden. And then the potatoes using the Midlighter Weekly Feed made from the LDS Prepper Premium Micronutrient Mix available at ldsprepperstore.com are deep green and beautiful, nice thick stalks, very, very healthy. But again, they're not ready to eat yet either. So I'll wait till the plants die down and then I'll be harvesting the potatoes from this box. This kale was planted two weeks ago today and it was just, a, I think, about three little uh, leaves of, of kale and you can see it's just absolutely beautiful completely filled out now here on harvesting at its peak you want to harvest constantly so these leaves here are coming off these larger leaves down here and I'll, I take off about three uh, leaves a day and uh, it just continues to grow and grow and grow our potatoes get about five feet tall our kale gets five to six feet tall before we pull it out of the ground. So this is what you get when you properly feed, water, and care for your garden. If you want to grow food as if your life depends on it, I encourage you to please, if you haven't already, go to ldsprepperstore.com 
get your LDS Pepper Premium Micronutrient Mix, which gives the plants all the nutrients they need when it's mixed with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. And pick up the Midlata Gardening Course book so you know how to grow a plentiful and life-saving garden. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. And if you use the methods I share on this channel, you can grow food as if your life depends on it.